Thank you very much for attending the 34th Tokyo International Film Festival Master Class Footprints of Animator Otsuka Yasuo. Before starting, we have some housekeeping announcements. The event is going to be delivered live and through the archive on the official site of the Tokyo International Film Festival, and also there will be recordings by the mass media. We ask for your understanding. Now, this master class is going to be held as a free discussion led by Fujitsu-san, who has close relations with a series on the theme of animator Otsuka Yasuo Footprints. We are planning to close at 7 o'clock. Now let us start. Let us introduce the guests. First, Tokyo Film Festival Programming Advisor and Animation Critic, Mr. Fujitsu Ryota, animator, Mr. Kotabe Yoichi, and animator, Mr. Tomonaga Kazuhide, and the film researcher, Mr. Kano Seiji. Please come up to the stage. Thank you very much for coming. Now, before starting the discussion, please give a brief greeting. First, Fujitsu-san. I'm a program advisor of Japanese animation sector. My name is Fujitsu. I will be the moderator during this session today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, Kotabe-san. Mr. Otsuka passed away, and seven months and a half has passed. I was surprised when I checked my calendar. But Mr. Otsuka at the workplace, he was fast in doing his work. He was very fast in drawing his animation. And when his work is over, he's no longer in his seat. I always wondered where he was. So that was how he was. So, and then he comes back to his seat without being noticed. So I think that Mr. Otsuka went somewhere and he's going to come back soon. I'm still expecting that. Yes, thank you very much. Next, Mr. Tomonaga. I'm animator, my name is Tomonaga. At the Telecom Animation, I worked together with Mr. Otsuka, I worked uh, together. He was a very good person. He has a lot of hobbies. So just like Lupang, I think, how should I say? It is very difficult to grasp him. He had a very broad latitude. I was very happy to be able to work with him. So we want to discuss with you about the footprints of Mr. Otsuka. Thank you very much. Thank you. By listening to you, yes, I'm looking forward to the discussion today. I'm excited. Last but not the least, Mr. Kano. I'm a film researcher. My name is Kano. Thank you very much for inviting me. With Mr. Otsuka, in his late ages, uh, we're very close, both in private and through work. So I want to discuss with you about him today. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Fujitsu, this year, why is it that at the Japanese animation sector, you decided to choose the theme of the footprints of animator Otsuka Yasuo? Yes. Why we chose the theme of the footprints of animator Otsuka Yasuo? As we already mentioned, in March this year, Mr. Otsuka passed away. In the animation industry after the war in Japan, he was active since the early days, and the animation boom in the 1980s, also, he was at the first line. And during that process, he developed a lot of his juniors. So by looking back at his career, I believe we can look back at the history of animation in Japan. It's a very important point. So looking back at his footprints, 
We want to make a retrospective using his three works, and we plan for this masterclass discussion today. Yes, thank you, all of you who are on the stage. In the animator industry in Japan, you are all legends. Of course, Mr. Otsuka was a top runner in Japan. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you about this subject. Now, Mr. Fujitsu, could you facilitate the discussions? Yes. Sometimes I may ask you to talk also, Mr. Inoue. Yes, thank you very much for coming. So the first point I wanted to talk with you is your first impression when you met Mr. Otsuka for the first time. Well, Mr. Kotabe, in the Toei animation days, was that in 1959 you joined the company that year? And Mr. Otsuka was uh, your senior in the office. So do you remember your first impression about him? Yes. At the Toei Animation. Uh, the first work of Toei Animation, which is The Tale of a White Serpent. It's the first time that we're able to make a manga film in Japan. I liked that since I was a kid, what was going to be in animation. I was very happy to be able to work in the sector. So I took the exam to join Toei Animation, and I was able to enter this company. But so I saw the tale of a white serpent that was made by Mr. Otsuka, and that is how I wanted to join the industry. And then the magic boy, when this film was made, uh, I joined the company. So I have never uh, drawn any animation. It was something new for me. So there were a lot of things that I had to learn. But at the time, Toei Animation produced the tale of a white serpent. And those who had talent drew the original drawing. And the young people made it into animation. There are about 10 people with the ability of doing so. And then there were the newcomers, the new animators, maybe six or seven animators. And we worked in teams. So there were 10 teams. And Mr. Otsuka was in the team. He was the most active person in charge of a lot of action scenes. And also, he used animation to express natural phenomena. He worked in a very dynamic team. And in my case, there was a team led by Kusube Daikichiro. Kusube san later established the Shinye animation. He was also good in making action scenes. So he draw a lot of uh, animation. Uh, that's the team that I joined. And each team, there were the leaders of each team. I was under Kusube-san's team. And Mr. Otsuka, I was never working directly under him. But he had a very high ability as an animator. So I knew him as a very highly talented animator. So he was a senior to you. And in the Tale of White Serpent, he drew very dynamic wave scenes. I heard rumors about the works that he did. So but you became closer. What was the trigger that brought you together as I said earlier, uh, this team uh, structure, it's like a castle. It's like we had 10 castles. 
and the team leader is the head of the castle or the country. So uh, Kazuko Nakamura-san, who was a graduate of the uh, Women's Art University, makes a female team. So it was like a castle of women. So uh, there were different features for each team. So it was like the uh, Civil War days uh, where uh, different warriors fought with each other. So each castle fought for their own animation with the strong belief that uh, the, ours is the best. Yes, we had that pride that ours is the best. I see, I would love to hear more later. So, Tomonaga-san, when you first met Otsuka-san, when was it? It was uh, Conan. You worked with him in Conan, Future Boy Conan. Is that the first time? Well, before I went to Telecom, I was in Opuro. O production and Otsuka-san did a lot of work with them at uh, Opuro and he came, visited Opuro sometimes and the president of Opuro, Namiki-san, he visited President uh, Namiki to have casual chat and so he visited O production quite often. So I looked at say, uh, him and see, oh, he's the legendary Otsuka-san from a distance. Oh, really, that was the late 70s? So Otsuka-san was already a legend back then? Yes. I liked uh, the work. So his name, Mr. Otsuka, and I knew, of course. Uh, but he made he could probably could not work with those who worked on uh, long feature films. Uh, that's my impression. And I, uh, uh, so it was uh, the castle of Cagliostro. I was seconded to telecom and I sat close to Otsuka-san and Miyazaki-san. That was the first time I came close to them and watched them, uh, how they work firsthand. But uh, Mr. Otsuka and Mr. Miyazaki, when I heard them speak, I thought, oh, what an extraordinary place I am. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be here. What kind of talk did they have? Miyazaki-san said, uh, sometimes he does not like the habits of Otsuka-san and say, Otsuka-san, this is not good. From a behind, I hear those voices from behind. Miyazaki-san, no, 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 you have to fix it this way. And uh, why can't he do it? And then, and then Otsuka-san get mad and say, oh, why don't you call, have Kon-san do it instead of me? Kondo-san, Yoshifumi Kondo-san. And I was listening. I heard those conversations from behind, a big pressure. So I thought maybe I shouldn't be here. That was how I worked with them. But he was a very friendly, casual person. He brought coke and uh, walk around the office. And uh, if someone's cup is empty, he say, "Why don't we? Why don't you drink coke? Do you want coke?" Of course, the one that he hasn't drunk directly from, he pours coke to someone's cup. So he watches everyone, how they are working, their work style, and uh, the caliber, the capability of each person. So I was impressed. Thank you very much. Kano-san, so you are the film researcher, and you've been doing various research. When did you first come in contact with Mr. Otsuka? About 30 years ago, I wanted to interview this journal, and I wrote a letter to him asking for an interview. And 
So we exchanged uh, letters uh, for about six months on the intent and the aspirations of his work. And he said, please come over one day. And so he invited me and we talked. So he said, it's fine. Uh, I, um, journal is fine, but I do also have my own magazine journal. So can you sell it for me? It's a military vehicle, vehicle journal. So I sold his uh, journal in many places and listened to him. And he asked me, invited me pretty frequently. So that was when it started. And then we had the magazine interviews. And I had many opportunities to interview for various magazines. In his later days, I also helped uh, his book when he wrote his book. So he asked you to sell the journal together for him. So he was casual. Well, the letter scared me, but letter was imposing. But he said, uh, what are you doing this research for? But and he said that the animation industry is not a very bright or promising. So he wrote many letters. So I received many, many letters from him. It was very honest, very candid writing. But he is a very soft person once I meet him. So we came close, and I was blessed with uh, having all these conversations with him. I see. So Kotabe-san, listening to all of you, he watches people, and he likes person. He's friendly. So this personality probably was existent from Toei days. Oh, yes. Yes, there are many interesting stories. So a person doing animation. Uh, it was not just animation that you do. Because of the situation of the times, when I joined the company, it was post-World War II. Fifteen years after the World War II, Japan was still poor. And so the salary was low, and uh, workers wanted the salary raise and asked companies. So we said we had to form labor union. And when the first union was established, Osaka-san became the head, the chairperson. But we were not mature, and so the union was crushed by the company right away. Right, it was gone. But instead, we learned lessons and we did carefully the second time around. In the initial days of the labor union, we made union news and uh, did various activities. And Otsuka-san was very interesting. So he was the head, the executive chief. And in the convention, the union convention, uh, there was a very, well, Ichiko Kamichika-san. Uh, she was a very innovative lawyer. And so we invited her as a guest. And Otsuka-san said, Ichiko Kamichika-san. Kamichika, Ichiko-san. <laughs> Otsuka-san has this assumption. <laughs> and he is uh, careless. I'm sorry, Otsuka-san, for saying this, but... And Ikaruga no Sato in Nara, where Horyuji Temple is existing. So we talked about that. And he says, <laughs> It's Nara, Nara no Iruka no Sato. Iruka no Sato. He shortened it. So he thinks. It's, uh, he's very friendly, so he has so much capability as an animator, but he relaxes us and a very approachable person. So on the other hand, as animator, he was good on actions. But later, with a horse and the little prince of the eight-headed dragon, he worked on the drawing. But as an animator, from your point of view, what are the 
characteristics of Otsuka san, in particular in, during Toei. I said I was under uh, Kusuda's team. I don't remember which piece of work was that, but Kusuda san wanted to draw a tiger. He taught me how to draw a tiger who is walking. Then Otsuka san came by and he said, This is how you should draw a tiger. Very simple. Then Kusuda san, he was drawing a very dynamic tiger with strength. But in case of Otsuka san's tiger, it was a very soft, gentle tiger. He says, Looking from the front, this is how. Uh, a tiger would walk, and everyone was so surprised to see that, and everyone was looking at that. So in front of so many people, he sees how to, he shows how to draw, and he would compare with other drawings. So I was surprised that he can draw freehand in front of so many people. I think he studied a lot, and he knows everything. So for the first time, I recognize the ability of Otsuka-san. May I say another thing? As was mentioned before, the little prince of the eight-headed dragon, that was the second time that I recognized Otsuka-san again. Uh, this film is being shown at this festival, but on that occasion, it was the third year since I joined the company, and I was drawing the original drawing. And besides, I was also drawing the characters. And there was a big uh, uh, serpent or eight headed dragon fighting. And that was a very well-known scene fighting on the air, which was made by Otsuka-san. And I was in charge of drawing a flying horse. Yes. And actually, I drew that horse. And in the last scene, action, I was surprised how dynamic and how strong that was and the speed of animation. I was surprised with that. And I thought that an animation character is not something that should just be drawn, but the character must be able to move with life. That is what I noticed. I remember that. That is what I learned from him on that occasion. Yes, Tomonaga-san, I have a question. In the uh, castle of Kaliostro, you went to telecom, you were seconded. And also, uh, Tomonaga-san, you were in charge of a car chase scene. Did you have an exchange with Otsuka-san? No, nothing in particular, but the storybook of Miyazaki-san was so well made, and his drawing was very flexible and lively. So I wanted to make the layout or reproduce uh, his uh, storyboard as much as possible. So, to establish the storyboard of Miyazaki-san on the screen was, I think, was very difficult. But when there are parts of cars that I cannot draw, I would consult Otsuka-san, and he said, cars should be drawn like this. He would teach me point by point. I was not familiar very much with cars, how to draw the wheel of a tire, and by drawing this manner, you can express the uneven surface of a tire. And the ground, uh, how to express the weight of the car on the ground. He taught me how to do that. And in Cagliostro, I don't remember what scene that was, but a scene looking from outside the car. 
and the car starts all of a sudden. And I was just drawing the person, but he taught me how to draw the uh, crutch and to express how Lupin was driving the car. So I was impressed with that. I was very impressed with him. Looking at some materials and his interview materials, Miyazaki-san and Otsuka-san's san action was a little heavy. There was a certain sense of volume or weight. So Tomonaka-san, did you feel that? Yes. And also, he expresses the weight, the timing to express the weight. How to distinguish between the dynamic and the static scene. He was very good in doing that. When the movement is fast, he would use only one piece, but there are many pieces when the movement is important. But in actually moving the animation, it looks as if things were moving smoothly, and he was very good in doing that. So you don't need so many pieces when the movement uh, scope is not very large. But he thinks from an entirely different perspective. Yes, Kano-san, I have a question to you. The features of Otsuka-san's action, he's answering in interviews, but as a researcher, from your perspective, what are the main features from your perspective? It's a very difficult question. Yes, I'm sorry, it's a very big question. Yes, Otsuka-san was a great animator. Everyone agrees with that. So what is great about him I think no one has ever analyzed that and clearly defined. So there are still many things that we cannot understand. So Tomonaka-san, who worked together with him, or uh, Kotabe-san, I can only guess from what others are saying and also look at his works. So I have researched the details, verified the details, and through that process, well, among some of the works that are minor, I think we can see similar features. Of course, dynamic action is important. But what Otsuka-san often said is not action, but he said it is business. Business, and not about work itself. But business in English, in the theater world, it means a gesture of a movement. And business is important in animation. So any movement which is important, which is necessary in that scene, uh, is convincing. And he said he doesn't like the word reality, but he says believability. The scene must be something that is believable. So he stresses, uh, exaggerates some areas, but the scene must be believable. So to make things that look heavy uh, as something that's really heavy. So he has a theory or a logic behind. I think he also made researches about Disney animation. He always uh, watched the new films of Disney. And another point about Otsuka-san, which is often overlooked, is that effect and action are the mechanic uh, drawings. Uh, he was doing all of that by himself. He was very diverse. And also designing the space in the toy animation, a wide, in a wide screen, there was a a plain screen moving from one side to another, but he started to make it look very dynamic. That is how he started. So uh, the little prince and the eight-headed dragon and uh, the Liu Mao 
uh, where there is the, uh, the fighting, uh, the low angle. Uh, he used many things in the Al-Qazam, the great. Uh, it was uh, his caliber. That's where he exerted his capability. It was from 1960, but uh, from before the Little Prince and the Headed Dragon, he, uh, from back to front or from top to bottom, how you can work dynamically, and, of course, uh, with the tail of the White Serpent, this kind of sense uh, was extraordinary. It was unrivaled. So the layout of the way he designs the space creates the space. This is where I think uh, is still overlooked. Thank you, uh, Kotabe-san. So Otsuka-san uh, is a very hard worker. He learns, studies very hard. So toys, uh, uh, Mr. Taichi Abeshita, who's the first director, brought back Disney how to animation from the US. So he took that and it was not widely available in Japan yet. Otsuka-san studied that, but not just by his, himself. He translated into Japanese. And the interesting uh, Disney uh, style was uh, translated into Japanese and distributed to everyone. He gave it to everyone. So it's not just he is doing it all by himself, confining it to himself. He show it to everyone and say, look, this is how it works. So he was very generous. And another point, Otsuka-san, he watches uh, and, and imitates and writes and learns and he says he doesn't know who he was impacted from. Who did he, was he impacted from? Who do you think? Usually when you copy the manga, you are affected by that. And that style shows. But Otsuka-san, we don't know where his style came from who he took it from. But he has this natural designing of space and three-dimensional design. He captures accurately. I'm still wondering how that was possible. So I wonder where Otsuka-san got it from. from. Probably from many sources, which created Otsuka-san. So Kano-san, I'm not asking you for an answer, but Kano-san, what do you think? about that. So what? Uh, when I look at Otsuka-san's work, uh, from the early days, he did sketches. <laughs> yes, you're right, sketch. But it, it was the parallel lines and the perpendicular line and the uh, train from side, but then it became diagonal. And he said that that was a big shock for him. And uh, the train operator allowed him to ride, climb the train. And he said uh, that was a great experience. And he said once uh, from the top, uh, you can see it blending with nature, with the mountains, and not the uh, sideways, but this diagonal angle is extraordinary. And he said he was embarrassed of what he was doing. So that's when he became really conscious of the perspective. So after World War II and Jeep, he not only sketched, but from diagonal and from bottom, he wrote from various angles. So for a 14, 15, 16-year-old, the sketch was extraordinary. So I think that was uh, this direct experience that uh, came out. Thank you. So Kotabe-san said uh, the Disney textbook from the U.S. was translated. He distributed to everyone. So Tomonaga-san, I have a question to you. So in telecom animation, he had this uh, face, educator's face. So could you uh, talk about that? So telecom animation film was originally uh, Mr. Fujioka Tokyo Movie uh, to make the film animation uh, for overseas film. He made it independently and started by hiring someone without much experience, right? Well, I don't know for sure, but 
Uh, someone was uh, offering the education, but uh, it didn't work, and Fujioka san said, Otsuka san, please come. So Otsuka san went. And it was not a structure environment to create uh, animation, it was uh, anarchy, no uh, 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 controller, and so it was like a school. So he said, it's new animation we want to create. So uh, TV, uh, movie, or it, that, we can't have anyone that is uh, deeply embedded in commercial, like TV and movie. So that was what he said. And the newcomers, uh, the first education uh, was very important. And they believed that. And so those who are in TV or animation, no good. So that's what they believed. That's what they believed. And so when Otsuka-san came, uh, uh, they thought, oh, Otsuka-san, he is already in TV, no good. But Otsuka-san, even then, some of them loved TV animation. And so Otsuka-san identified them. And so he wanted to, them to become the front runner of animation creation. So he identified those people and made Lupin for TV. And Otsuka san is a quick worker. So he uh, wrote and, and then also a lot, had the assistants do the work and they tra he trained them. And he is very good at connecting with people. And so all the people he had relations with in the businessmen business, he called them and asked them to come over. So Tobizawa san in April a production. Who was it? Atsuko Tanaka san and Harakeiko san and Shimada san and from O production Tanma Mai san. So he invited all of them, and uh, so he made this core team of originals. So it's the new uh, warrior and the head. So he made this value, value perception. And he made the castle of Caliostro. So he invited people from outside. So those uh, people from outside who made the original team, they were the core team and made this uh, castle of Kaliosoro in a very short period of time, four to five months. So in this short period of time, first uh, the newcomers uh, that who first hated Otsuka-san were involved and in, uh, were drawn in. And uh, some were very capable as the video man story and, and so they became the uh, very well functioning uh, warriors in the team so even uh, those who do not know anything if they have a place uh, where they can sincerely work they can cultivate they can develop and gain capability so Otsuka-san's Organization building was very impressive. In Toei, I think he did something like that. I think I wrote it, uh, read it in his book. So for cultivating people, he has this uh, concept of organization building. Yes. So we were only busy uh, writing our own work. Uh, we did not have time to think about organization, but Otsuka-san was able to do that. And in Ca Castle of Caliostro, I found it interesting that the video uh, person said, I'm done with the uh, video, and Otsuka-san says, oh, okay, then the next cut is this. Otsuka-san, so he looks at the video for check, and he says, what is this, what is this? So Otsuka-san sorts it. He does the sorting, and he, he knows who can do what. He knows each individual's capability. So he can do that uh, without going through the production. Of course, the uh, production does the final work, but he can distribute work. He was extremely busy, but was able to do that. He was attentive, and I think that was great. 
So I think this experience that no one can imitate, but by giving appropriate cuts to each individual, that person will be able to grow, right? Yes. kotabe san have a question. In the castle of Cagliostro, in Telecom, there was a uh, cheer brat. So what kind of studio was that? Well, Otsuka-san, as I have said, well, usually, if there's something you want to produce, you would usually want to gather your colleagues, but it was different in case of Chieva Brat. Who is necessary to mix this, not only for himself, but always doing entirely different work outside. But uh, he invited me. Uh, would you like to join the Chief Brat team? And there was another work that was not realized. But at a production, uh, there was a story about making a TV series. He's not calling people because he wants to produce by himself, but he thinks who are appropriate to make this. So Takahata Isao, who was in a different place, was invited, and also Miyazaki Hayao and character me. So he would organize the team inside his mind and invite these people. So he's like a producer, right? Yes. So not for himself. He thinks of what is necessary to make something that is needed. <laughs> and what is your question? Yes, Kotabe-san, uh, you joined the telecom. Uh, what kind of studio was that on those days? It was the first time for me. Uh, Otsuka-san, I knew him for a long time and others, and Takahata-san, uh, we also joined the company together. So, oh, he's here, I thought. This is a place where he is. I was a different place, but I can, it was easy for me to join. So, I joined the place because I knew him at the Toei. I know this person. It was very natural. And the allocation of work also was very easy and natural. In other interviews, Otsuka san and Kotabe san, you are both the uh, design director. Yes, so we know what each other is good or not good at. And the father of Chi, I would be in charge of that. And, and Utsuka-san would be in charge of a different drawing. I would be drawing Chi and other characters, and the cat, and others. So very naturally, without any planning, as a natural flow, we're working together. Tomonaga-san, as a, a uh, long feature story, after Kaliostro there was Chie, but Chie uh, was a feature film after the organization was established. Yes, there were more uh, people able of making the original picture, but different Kaliostro in case of Chie, but type of characters were very interesting and funny. I don't want to live with these people, but it is very funny to look at them. So, Otsuka san and Takahata san, I think, were very happy by seeing these characters. Chie's father and, and the master of a restaurant, they were very happy at seeing that. Otsuka san, was saying that uh, a real uh, alcohol drinker drinks like this. He shows how people drink. So I was very impressed with that. So that work was very interesting. Compared to original story, in case of Chie, there's more action. In the original story, 
there's uh, a, a brain buster, but not much action. Or Tetsu gets angry and kicks. That is not an action. But that was only one frame uh, as a story. But on the film, animation became a action, and which is very interesting. That made the story interesting. How did you do that? A different person made the scenario, a very well-known author. And when we saw that, we thought it's different from the Chie that we are thinking about. Each person read the original story of Chi and the Brett. At first, I didn't like that drawing. But I didn't like the face. But my partner, who has already passed away, read the book and said, what do you think is funny about it? This is the most interesting book. And then I read it again, and I finally noticed that this was very interesting. So I was invited to join the Chief of Bread team by Otsuka-san. So Otsuka-san and Takahata-san and myself, we liked the book written. We liked the original book. Because this this looks violent, but it's very warm, deep inside, and very humane. So we started to like the original manga, and we wanted to express it. And Mr. Takahata said, I will write it, and he wrote the scenario, ultimately. And as close as possible to the original, we all agreed in doing that. For example, in case of uh, a mango, uh, one frame expresses one thing the way Chi walks. To express on the manga, and how to express that in animation, we have to think about it. How should we express that in animation? So we did it by ourselves, and we got convinced, and then made the animation. That's a quick animation. Yes, we did that, how to walk it, the walking. We didn't use any action recorder. It's a matter of imagination. No matter how we use an action recorder, it's not possible to walk in that way. We have to imagine this is, is how we should express the way she walks, or how is a cat walking? You must be able to imagine and then make an animation. The way she steps and she walks, how can we express that? We would imagine and make samples. Did you use live action? Yes, I think we did. Oh, maybe I was wrong. I think we made some tests of walking. I remember seeing that. So you draw and make an action recorder to study? Yes, I think we did. So it's not a real person walking. Oh, yes, I know, yes. As a test, yes, to use the drawing. So to make a manga into animation, I think that's what makes things more interesting and funny. Well, Kano-san, I have a question. Now, we are talking about Mr. Otsuka animator's work. And Otsuka-san wrote the Sakuga Ase Mamire, which is a book showing the history of Japanese animation. And there were revisions made, and I think Kano-san, you're involved in the revisions of the book. What is the significance of the existence of that book? I think what is important is that Otsuka-san wrote that book. Yes, I was a reader uh, when this was uh, printed in the magazine, but, but Kotabe-san and others, they talk a lot about it, and there are many books published. But at the time, there were no books like that. 
So when was toy animation made? What is the history and what happened on the first days when the tale of white serpent was made? There was a book of history of Japanese animation, but these were the only two books available at that time. So what was actually taking place in the field? We didn't know anything until the book was published and very details about how the people move and what happened between works and what technical development happened was also expressed. So on uh, which day of the which month in the chronological order, that's not only uh, the, uh, so it was very interesting who did what, not just the uh, facts. And so it was e uh, very easy to read and very interesting as the uh, historical uh, events. Uh, but there were some uh, numbers that were a little off. We had to correct that and fine tune, but uh, there are no other books that can uh, be on par with that. Otsuka-san always took record. He wrote diary for decades, and I wrote, uh, read uh, the diary. It's very detailed. He uh, went to see a movie with someone, someone. He recorded everything. When he was extremely busy, he did not write diary, but from his early days, when he was young, he continued his diary. And I uh, wrote, uh, read about uh, his elementary school, and but not just write down in the diary, but he also took a very comprehensive view in who did what. And so it's a very historical book. It's a valuable book, a must have. But there are no other books in other studios like this. So to look back into the history, it gives us so many clues and hints. So I have a question to you, Inoue-san. So we heard a lot from the panelists. Any impressive moments uh, for you, Inoue-san, about Otsuka-san? Samurai giants. Uh, when I was a child, I was immersed in it. I'm a Hanshin fan, but even then, still, it was a very interesting book as a fiction. So what about the, uh, the story, A Production? It was back in A Production. So Kano-san, Samurai Giants. Uh, yes, uh, Samurai Giants. Otsuka-san did not like it very much. So, uh, with Nagahama-san, he was not in a, a good terms. Well, he, he doesn't like baseball that much. That's it. So Kotabe-san and uh, Fund Fund, Takata-san and uh, Kotabe-san and Miyazaki-san, uh, he, he sent them to Heidi and he did Samurai Giants. So Otsuka-san was doing Samurai Giants and it was like uh, the, the backside. So Otsuka-san knows how to delegate things to people. Otsuka-san did not love Samurai Giants, but, so like Kawachi Hideo-san and his su successors, he said he left it in their hands, he said. But according to Kawachi-san, he said he was able to develop his skills thanks to that. So it's not Otsuka-san's entire work, but it, it, it key points, characters, the well-known uh, baseball players, Osan and the legendary players, Sadaharu O and Gashima Shigeo and Kaneda-san, uh, they were all uh, uh, wrote <laughs> and uh, the uh, the announcer was uh, very flamboyant, and it was very interesting to see. But Kotabe-san, the first uh, Kotabe-san, you did uh, half of the original with Otsuka-san in the first volume, right? First version. Yes, uh, Mr. Kaneda, picture. I tried to write him, but we left. I don't know where Kotabe-san uh, was in charge of in version one. I know that uh, I don't remember, but in the first story, the future boy Conan uh, resembles. Uh, so the whale chases and yes, interesting. So Otsuka-san 
did samurai giants. Uh, he was not well knowledgeable about uh, the baseball. And very interesting. So, Kyojin no Shiro, uh, that's a star of the giants. Uh, it's Kusube sans. But the samurai giants, it's very comical movement. So it's so contrast, such a contrast between those two. Can't believe the same person wrote that too. So uh, the impressive works for Otsuka-san, could you name some? Where do you think his turning point was in Otsuka-san's career? Moomin, he did Moomin in a production with uh, Kotabe-san, and uh, I think it was uh, one uh, trend uh, was to flow, natural flow. So from a production, from Toei to a production, our trigger was Moomin. Moomin was our trigger. Takahata Isao-san and myself, at least. Because animation was uh, facing cost reduction, uh, the self-production. And uh, it was very difficult to produce the uh, works. And that's when I watched Moomin. I still remember the title had uh, the waves. When I saw the waves, I was impressed. Wow, you can do this in TV? This is possible with TV? I want to do this. I cannot do this in Toei. That was how shocking it was. So, from A production, I had the offer and I decided to go. So that was the kind of work. That was my view. Did you know that Otsuka-san did it? Of course I knew. Yes. So Kotabe-san, in Otsuka-san's career, where do you think he had his turning point? Takahata-san's uh, horse uh, venture. I don't think that was possible. Uh, so Horace, Prince of the Sun. So it was Otsuka-san uh, who said it was good. So when the director uh, was decided first, so it was the opposite. And Otsuka-san nominated Takahata-san and, and uh, pulled in Takahata-san. I think that's a great achievement. So Isao Takahata-san, like Kano-san said, reality. I don't, I don't dislike that because my understanding of reality is something that is worthy of believing. That's reality. Even if it's a lie, even if it's not true, you can believe it. Believability, believable movements. So I think the uh, Horus, Prince of the Sun, did that first. So Horus is village, the way it's designed, and the demon, uh, the contrast with humans. It seems like a fiction, but it's tangible. Uh, that's the world I wanted to build. And Takahata-san said that to the staffs. So we wanted to, to build a believable world, uh, this form or movement. So that's what we tried to think hard and explore. And we solicited ideas from the staffs. Yes, so it was all member participatory type work. It's not like Old Katan did all the work and let's do this. No, all, we asked everyone to come up with ideas and decide with everyone and say, this is good. 
but this element is so good, so why don't we blend these two? So it was a very organic, organic blending, integration, fusion when we made this work. So Otsuka-san came up with an idea for one character, and then this triggered others to write something. And Miyazaki Hayao-san comes up with a world view, world that is believable, which astonishes everyone. This building, this wood, uh, this uh, shoes, what kind of texture is it? We want to realize that texture. So we look at all these uh, drawing and take in all the elements to, to refer to the texture, to realize the texture. We understood the importance of doing that and understood what kind of character. Not just the one-way character, uh, but a character with heart and mind and complexity. This complexity was also expressed. And so we discussed with the director uh, to find out what the director felt and thought. So, to say these words, what kind of action is necessary for someone to say these words? That is what we are thinking. So the view of a world which is believable, to make such a believable world, and Otsuka-san was a leader in drawing a world that is believable. And that's expressed into films, uh, which was the uh, horse, the Prince of a Sun, and that is the best work that expresses his ability. Yes, Tomonaga-san, how about you, about Otsuka-san's work? Well, I'm not sure, but I think Horace, the Prince of a Sun, in terms of content and expression, and not a very soft line, but he used the Xerox to express the content of a texture. And from a layman's perspective, because I was still uh, in my hometown at that time. And then later, he, uh, he was drawing actions, but later he produced a moving, which is very gentle. But I was wondering, would boys like a film like Mooming, which is so cute? And then maybe it's Lupin. Different from animations for children, it was very maniac and also with sexy women. A Mushi a production was also making animations for adults, but I think Lupin was uh, much more. It was really animation different from what we have ever seen before. So I think Lupin is, represents a lot of Otsuka-san's hobby is reflected. The first Lupin, the details were applied because that was also hobbies of Otsuka-san. Well, Kano-san, what's your impression? <laughs> Very difficult question. As a programming advisor of the three works, I think uh, we could share the difficulty of having to introduce Otsuka-san only with the three works. I think the viewers are fans of Otsuka-san, many of them. So let me talk from a different perspective. Otsuka-san, with working together with Kotabe-san and uh, Miyazaki-san, Takahata-san, very great works were made, uh, which is essential in talking about the history of Japanese animation. But Otsuka-san himself was looking for different possibilities of animation. Otsuka-san, in his late years, 
he was not able to draw as he used to do before, was not able to mass produce. But he was thinking a lot about it. And I think he was thinking about what he should do. A production became a Shinye animation. And so would he retire uh, and become a member of a management or do something like the future by Konan? And within telecom, Tomonaga-san, Tanaka-san, Tomizawa-san, and other others were did very great work. Things became very clear. But then Otsuka-san was there as advisor. He was also directing other films, which is a combination of animation and the storytelling, which no one tried before. The, that was a new possibility that he tried to open as a director. And Suzuki Hajime uh, was uh, the name that, that he used on those days. That was his pen name. So he tried to work on animation from a different direction, from a different perspective. We was seeing Lupin, what was most impressive for him was the first series, fourth episode. After Osumi-san left, and Miyazaki-san and Takahasa-san joined later. So during that period, he was doing the direction of the work. So Lupin, who was a person that makes jokes, was determined to die in that story. So how should humans live? I think that is a theme that he was thinking. Because he experienced the tuberculosis, he was young. And he got hospitalized in the Yotsuya Kaidan. And this Lupin's uh, story, we can see that concept. Uh, Mr. Miyazaki, Mr. Takahata uh, has a different taste. And this is his personality which we should further consider to see a different angle of Otsuka-san. Yes, from a different perspective, uh, not from his representative work, work, so we can see a different angle of Otsuka-san. Yes, by looking back at Otsuka-san, I look at many uh, candidates and also considered the Fuma conspiracy, but it's difficult because of many reasons. But Otsuka san, I think he liked this work. What do you think of that, uh, Tomonaga san? You were participating as a character designer. Yes, it was very funny. I enjoyed that very much. When that project came up, Lupin until then was in a foreign country and and this was like a sightseeing movie, and I did not like that. So we wanted to change the location to Japan. That is how that project started. And in there, Otsuka-san's hobbies were included, like a locomotive train, and uh, hot springs, and ninjas. But it was very hard to come up with a conclusion. Each individual scene was interesting, but looking at the whole story, maybe the thing was weak. How was Otsuka-san involved in making the scenario? And there were other uh, directors from outside. When talking with the director, he would uh, change his storybook or he would add something to the scenario. He was like a supervisor. And actually, in making the drawings, he made corrections to, to the original picture made by the younger people. He provided advices. But he was not doing the drawing by himself or check all the drawings. So that is a supervision. 
But he was actually involved, yes, in making the rough, rough drawing. He checked the drawings made by the younger people, and he made changes. And many young people asked for his consultation, and he provided advice. He drew a lot of uh, the storybook in the film of conspiracy. Yes, at a shrine, there was a scene of a shrine. The, and the heroine was uh, Murasaki, and there was a story of making uh, Murasaki marry Goemon. That scene, he drew the storybook uh, with speed. But looking at the film today, yes, the whole story has speed. And the locomotive, he likes trains. So went to locations. Yes, that is Otsuka-san story, but yes. Yes, was that Otsuka-san? I don't remember. Yes, maybe. Yes, all that uh, locomotive train until the locomotive starts, I think, was drawn by Otsuka-san. Yes, he insisted on the train. This is how a locomotive should move. And this is uh, how the train should be on the rail. The size of a train, uh, he insisted on that. When we draw, we tend to make the rail wide in range. But the Japanese uh, train rails are narrower. And he wanted to express that. So he insisted very much on that. So yes, yeah, with Lokomoda, uh, Panda Go Panda, the second. Uh, so the rainy day circus, uh, the locomotive uh, comes in, and Otsuka-san looks so happy. And Takahata Isao-san also liked locomotive, and so how locomotive operates. Uh, there was a scene. So the very front of the locomotive and the coal, charcoal is put in. How can it burn? And so that was uh, followed very meticulously. We did not know anything, and we realized how it works. And so the lid opens, and Torachan uh, put coal in it. And when he plays, uh, it burns up. and. Uh, time is running out. But thank you very much for all your valuable input. So we started with locomotive, ending with locomotive. So this was very much alike Otsuka-san. Thank you so much. So I will return the microphone to you. We still have a little more time left, so before we close, we want you to uh, give us the last closing remarks. So Kano-san, could I ask you to go first? Summary comment or the closing comment, please. So any impressions? Uh, we have a little time left. So anything you could not say? So this uh, Tokyo International Film Festival is a very formal, large-scale festival. Otsuka-san's uh, uh, course, uh, this uh, looking back on his uh, uh, following his uh, legend and footprint, this is valuable. Uh, the Japanese animation, this is not just the one genre of film. It is uh, leading the Japanese culture without any doubt. Uh, how it is structured, how it is formed, and what kind of people went through what kind of difficulty to come this far, this kind of validation, verification is still lagging behind. And so through Yasuo Otsuka-san, uh, the top runner, we want to look back on the history and see how Otsuka-san developed the works and how he was involved. Of course, Miyazaki-san and Takahata-san and Kotabe-san and others uh, collaborated, and so we want to look back 
and understand how people were involved and how it, one led to another work, the next work. I hope we can have more opportunities to validate and verify uh, how this all happened. Thank you very much. Yes, you're right. So this Tokyo International Film Festival, uh, so we are uh, talking about the uh, Brad, Chie, the uh, Brad and the Little Prince and the Eight-Headed Dragon. Uh, this is maybe an opportunity for people to be interested in old Tsukasan for the first time and look back and realize what else he did. So this is a very valuable opportunity if you are interested and if you know, already know, you may be able to see it one more time. Thank you very much. So next, Tomonaga-san, could you give us your closing remarks? So not as a professional, I'm still a fan of Otsuka-san, even after he passed away. Uh, there are still so many things that I did not know that I heard from the uh, two uh, uh, co-panelists, and so it was very interesting for me. And I was happy. Thank you very much. Tomonaga-san, you talked about the tiger. Uh, so the tiger was wrote, written very smoothly uh, in the drawing. You mentioned that about Otsuka-san. He has this very, uh, he's observative. Usually people cannot write that smoothly, but he observed things very carefully in day-to-day -day life? Yes, and he sketched a lot. He showed me his sketch one day. Before he became an animator, uh, he said that the, the big deciding point is how much sketch you do before you become the animator. So he wrote so much, and his hands, until his hands knew learned. So Goemon uh, original, it was a very rough sketch, a very strong flow when he took out the sword. So he first had the very overall image. I, that's when I felt he sketched so much so when uh, the deformated uh, sword, uh, taking out the sword, and the batting and the pitching, uh, it is deformed, but it looks, uh, it's believable. Yes, uh, that was something very oppressive today. So do you have any episode about the arrangement? Otsuka sounds very theoretical. And uh, those movements or exaggerations, movements are exaggerated, but it has this imposing presence. And sometimes comical movements, he liked that a lot. So I wanted to reproduce his movement, and I worked hard and uh, t set theory aside and tried to write like him. I spent a lot of time in my 20s, so uh, arranging Otsuka-san's work and upgrading it. I don't think I was able to do that. Oh, but uh, Tomonaga-san, you are the top runner. So I would like to ask that you um, expect and hope for, uh, for you to play bigger roles going forward. No. Thank you very much. So, Kotabe-san, your closing remarks, please. Otsuka-san was a truly big presence. So looking back, of course, in animation, as well as the union, labor union activities, uh, the Kumiai news, the labor union news uh, that was used for PR, we didn't have copier then. And so we had to use the print work. So you write, uh, the use a pencil uh, to write, and then the copper plate 
and the way you align the paper to print and things like that. So he was so broad based and he was knowledgeable. Yes, he uh, did. He was a public servant too. He was a narcotics uh, officer too in the past. So for animation. I'm sure he studied so much uh, and be able to write anything. He wrote and wrote and wrote and learned by heart. And that's why he can say he can write so smoothly in front of people, just like that. There was a Chinese language course on TV. Uh, the lecture was of uh, authority in uh, Chinese literature. He was very gentle, and he made me feel like I understood uh, the Chinese language. Otsuka-san was like that. So the way he wrote the animation, he teaches us so softly, and he captures the key point, and so it's so convincing. And the next time you do it, I can do it. So his training and his experience was enormous. And because he has all that, he can teach so softly and gently. So Otsuka-san, for all of us, is the great teacher of animation. So that was what he was like for me. So what I learned from this talk is he was a great animator, but also great teacher, lecturer, and, and the producer. And also, he was thinking of a whole industry because he uh, developed the, and trained the younger people. <laughs> yes, I recognize how big he was. And lastly, as Tomonaga-san said, Miyazaki-san and Otsuka-san uh, were always discussing about uh, drawings. But what was his relationship with Mr. Takahata Isao? In case of Chie, the brat, rather than debating, I think Takahata-san's requests were so great that Miyazaki-san, Takahata-san, the works they make were very good. So there was a trust between them. So there are difficult requests. Though they were younger and junior, uh, Otsuka-san would accept and try to respond. So that was how big he was. So it was very impressive. I thought Otsuka-san was really impressive. So oh, Kotabe-san, you worked on the drawing on Chiv Brett. Yes, as I have said. Yes, we, it was possible to understand each other without having so much debate. What kind of discussion were you having? People often ask me about it, but there was no discussion. With Takahata-san, I think you're able to understand each other without speaking. Yes. And he would uh, show by himself what he wanted to do. Yes, thank you very much. I have a question. In case of Chie storybook, Otsuka-san was making the final storybook by listening to Takahata-san's plan. Otsuka-san would be drawing. Yes. And I would refer to the comic book of Chie to collect information and draw the character. Otsuka-san made the layout. Thank you very much. Now, uh, lastly, if we did sign, uh, thanks to your cooperation, we could recognize the how important was Otsuka-san's presence, and from different perspectives, we were able to communicate the presence of Otsuka-san. We tend to talk only about the very famous works 
but were able to discuss about other works that he did. So, so I think there was a meaning in talking about the subject at a master class of the Tokyo International Film Festival. Thank you very much for your participation. Yes, today. Now, at the Tokyo International Film Festival, Chief Brett and the Little Prince of the Eight Headed Dragons will be shown. So, please watch these works uh, after thinking over about what we discussed here. So that is an entry point, and I hope you could refer to other works of Otsuka-san. Yes, we are running out of time now. So thank you very much for your participation. It's now time to conclude today's event. Fujitsu-san, Kotabe-san, Tomonaga-san, Kano-san, thank you very much. I enjoyed very much your talk. Thank you. So please enjoy the Tokyo International Film Festival. Thank you.